All right, let's do a round of applause one more time to show our love and support. We can hand that off to your bridesmaid. And now you can do a PDA and hold each other's hands. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends. It is with great pleasure and excitement that I welcome you to the wedding ceremony of Flo and Jez. It means so much to them that you're all here today. They would like to acknowledge those that could not be here right now, but that does mean there's extra booze at the reception shortly for everyone. So while we're sad they can't make it, thanks for the extra alcohol. My name is Daniel Delby, and while I am a registered marriage celebrant, they've already taken care of the boring legal bits, so today we get to do the fun part and celebrate their ceremony. Jez and his passport are very thankful for that. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm not your typical old lady celebrant and the bride and groom have heard today's ceremony and they know exactly what I'm gonna say, so feel free to enjoy and laugh along with us. <laughs> Laughing actually does make you 70% more attractive to the opposite sex, so Jez must have laughed a lot because he's definitely batting. <laughs> uh, Jez and Flo are the first couple that I've met that are crazy enough <laughs> to marry each other twice. Jez knew that Flo was that good that he just wanted everyone else to know that she's officially twice the wife that anyone could ask for. They are passionate and loving, but they also let their Burmese heritage spice up their relationship with a little bit of fire. They used to have some pretty heated arguments and they're both self-confessed alphas, but they've learned to laugh at each other now once Jez admits he's wrong. <laughs> but together they're right and Flo believes that their soulmates destined to meet in every single lifetime. However, the story of how they met in this lifetime will change depending on who you ask. I've been told three different versions of events with only two of them being safe to tell everyone today. <laughs> and I'm gonna try and combine them into one to share. That's kind of like the night you met actually stumbling, so let's go. <laughs> Method acting. <laughs> so apparently it was a Friday night where Jez wasn't meant to be out as he had an early start Saturday morning. <laughs> when, when he arrived at a catch up with the Aircon boys, that sounds like a gang, it's not, they just work on air conditioners. <laughs> they were anything but chill or cool. All of them were completely hammered and doing Jez's head in, so he bailed. But as fate would have it, one of his mates was across the road at another bar and he gave Jez a buzz just as he was about to leave, sharing the news of a pregnancy. So Jez popped over for a bevy to celebrate, not knowing a new romance was about to be born as well. As the drinks flowed, they decided to hit up Niche Bar, much to Jez's delight, since we all know he's a massive hip hop fan. <laughs> <laughs> The story takes a turn when Jez claims that after ordering a drink, he caught Flo gazing deep into his eyes, penetrating his soul. <laughs> he quickly told his mate to fuck off and avoid cramping his style, because <laughs> his mate had new dad energy. <laughs> and so he posted up at a nearby table. Now Flo, who'd been drinking at a work event all day, seductively danced her way towards him. Jez was thankful that she had her beer goggles on or probably more of her cocktail contacts in as it helped her think that he was a perfect 10 as she initiated the conversation. So that's his version. <laughs> okay. According to Flo, however, it didn't happen like this at all. She claims that Jez was like a dance floor shadow <laughs> getting in her way and bumping into her. Jez told me it's not true because he'd never do bumps on the dance floor. <laughs> but Flo saw him as fresh mate and she was drawn to his height and his abundant hair. She playfully challenged him to guess where she was from and Jez, in a suave move, guessed heaven. <laughs> no, he didn't. I wrote that in for him. <laughs> <laughs> when he admitted he thought it was somewhere in Asia, it only fueled her infatuation, and thanks to hearing his classy foreign accent, <laughs> she was even more in love. After a quick chat, they both discovered they were Burmese, but Flo didn't quite believe him. I mean, when I look at Jez and hear him speak, the first thing I think is Asian, right? <laughs> well, in it, from Asia, mate. <laughs> 
Jez then pulled out his trump card, which was a picture of his granddad. And with hip hop tunes playing and his hip hop wingmanning him, the game was on. Jez sealed the deal with a star sign pickup line, assuring Flo that he was different from other Virgo men. <laughs> probably because he hated R&B music and was about to lie to her for the first time ever in order to impress her. When asked if he liked the tunes, he said yes, and he had to bust a move to beats that he secretly hated all night. Luckily, his Burmese jeans carried him through as he pop and locked his way through the evening. As Chris Brown's song Privacy played in the background, they ironically shared their first kiss in public. They'll be recreating that shortly. <laughs> But with a bit of strategic liquoring up, we might witness Jez crump on the dance floor later at the reception as well. <laughs> after, <laughs> after such a draining night, unfortunately Jez wasn't able to robot his way to work the next morning, so he was promptly fired on the spot by his boss. <laughs> However, when Jez caught up with him and shared a photo of Flo, he was rehired immediately. <laughs> So his inability to have a work-life balance has resulted in a work-life wife success. After a magical first meeting, Jez knew that he needed a leg up to help him wrap his head around where to take her out. He told me that even though he was pretty skint at the time, he knew that he had to pull out all the stops because she was proper fit, isn't she? <laughs> proper fit. <laughs> There's that classic Burmese slang again. He'd never dated one of his own kind before, so he Googled to try and find the best Asian restaurant in Perth. The top result was Long Chim, so he booked it straight away. When Flo arrived, looking absolutely stunning, he was stoked that he'd nailed it. The choice to splash out on Asian, I meant. <laughs> what, imp what impressed Flo even more than the venue was his passion for chili, the two hour conversation at the bar, and how much that he made her laugh all night. They both agree that they knew from the very first date that what they felt was different to any other connections they'd made in the past. It was confirmed a few weeks later for Jez when he introduced her to his boss Owen in person this time. Even though he's only a few years older than Jez, he's been like a father figure, so his opinion held a lot of weight. When Jez went to the toilet, Owen told Flo that Jez was a great guy and gave her a few words and his approval. Around the same time frame, Flo knew Jez was the one when she woke up to a good morning kiss and she blurted out, I love you, have a good day. They've been inseparable ever since their first meeting. And even when they head out with their friends, they end up gravitating back towards each other. The girls know this all too well, as Jez used to gravitate to all of the girls' days <laughs> to spend time with Flo, even though he was the only guy there. <laughs> this helped him fall in love with her even more, though, as he, saw, he got to see how generous she is with her friends and with him. He loves that she pushes him to be the best version of himself and that she cares so much about him, whether it's serving coffee and breakfast in the morning before work or Michelin star dinners when he gets home. She once made him lobster rolls for, once, for lunch, which he loved, and it helped inspire him to work harder, mainly so he could pay for the ingredients of lunch. <laughs> <laughs> he adores how well she looks after the pups that are here today and appreciates that she makes his life as easy as possible after a hard day at work. If that's, not, if that's not enough, she arranges incredible birthdays for him, whether it's a trip down south for a big house party with all of his mates or a private chef where they all chipped in for some extravagant sashimi. Even though Christian and Mitch hate seafood, they still contributed to the bill, even though all they ate was a lamb chop. <laughs> Usually they're off chops, so it meant a lot to Jez. <laughs> They both love their circle of friends that they've turned into a family. So again, from them, a massive thank you to everyone that's here today. All of this stuff is easy for Flo to do for him because she loves how Jez is just a good guy and anyone that's had the pleasure of meeting him would say the same. He's a great lad. Unless you mess with his dogs, cars or coffee order. She's in awe of how he is determined to be great at anything that he puts his mind to. And Jez is one of the most generous men she's ever met and she secretly likes that he makes fun of her and then tries to backpedal when she fires up. <laughs> Ultimately, the way that Jez knows how to compromise in any situation means the absolute world to her. She loves seeing him actively working to provide a solution to whatever scenario they find themselves in, and his selflessness does not go unappreciated. Just thought, are we okay with the light for the photos? Is this all good? Yeah.
Cool. He's just really tall. <laughs> so, <laughs> cool. Um, it was Flo, though, that was the selfless one at the beginning when she agreed to marry Jez so our government wouldn't send him back to Burma. I mean, England. <laughs> He proposed by saying, all right, Flo, I'm going to get kicked out of the country, so you're going to have to marry me. And off they went to the registry. For their second attempt, though, Jez wanted to avoid all of the cliches, knowing that she'd spot them from a mile away. So he hatched a brilliant plan involving her amazing girl gang, the same crew that Jez and No Mates used to crash back in the day. I think, is that them over there? Yeah. Min, a.k.a. Mum, was in charge of their yearly girls-only white and gold-themed Christmas bash. And Flo thought it was odd that she was the only one wearing gold at this white and gold. But little did she know, it was because she was about to become a trophy wife again. Even though he hadn't seen Min in ages, he sees her as one of his OGs. She'd always been a fountain of wisdom and support for both of them, so he hit her up with his master plan. Fast forward to the day, Jez showed up claiming that he had lost his key and needed Flo's to get into his house, which apparently is not out of the ordinary, so there were no alarm bells raised. It did cause Nan, Alyssa, to frustratedly roll her eyes and ask, yeah, what now? But she was in on it and could be up for an Oscar for acting just as her normal self. As he was about to leave the girls, uh, they asked him to be Santa and hand out their gifts. With, with a Santa hat and a full sack of goodies, he handed each girl their present. Flo came and sat on his lap last and she stood up to collect her gift. But as she turned around, she saw Santa that was now on one knee looking for a Mrs. Claus. So from a Christmas ring to a wedding bell, are you guys ready to make this official? Um, well, official in front of your friends. Yeah? yeah? Cool. These are the I do's. Jez, do you promise to love Flo as much as you love R&B? <laughs> 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 no, I love, <laughs> no, love flow as much as you love spicy food. Try not showing her memes when you're driving 100 kilometres an hour. <laughs> Make sure you stay alive after the bucks do. Keep making her laugh every single day and continue to be the geezer, big man ting, and, <laughs> and loyal partner that she has fallen in love with from this point forward. I do. I should say I asked her to describe him in three words and that's what she gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Flo, do you promise to love Jez as much as you love your dogs? Let him finish his last mouthful of lunch before you ask him what's for dinner. Make sure the washing machine's never broken. Keep looking after him like you have and continue to be the bougie, sexy, giving and caring partner that he has fallen in love with from this day forward. I do. Beautiful. So we're going to do the vows now. So I think, Jez, you're going to go first. So um, do you want to, like, make it look good by hiding the phone or do you want to keep yeah. there you go I'm prepared yeah it's all right it's uh, a strategy um so what's going to happen he's going to read his vows uh I'll hand the microphone to him once he's done he's going to give it back and then we can get one of the best men to hand him her ring he'll put it on as a finishing move we'll chap and clear clap and cheer and then we'll swap hello <coughs> since our first date we have been inseparable from that day, life has just got better and better. You are the most important person to me in this world, and I told you that a long time ago. Everything I do is to make you happy. You're my best friend. I vow to always be by your side like I have from day one. I vow to work hard so you can have as little stress in life as possible and be able to get your hair, nails, skin needling, <laughs> etc., etc. <laughs> But done every two minutes so you can so, so you can look pretty for me um, and go on your boozy lunches at dinner dates 20 times a week with, uh, with your girls um, I vow to still love you when you talk over me and interrupt my shit stories I'm telling I'm telling our friends in the kitchen that they really wanted to hear um, I, vow, I vow to carry on having the best time with you like we always do, and create more funny memories with our huge family of friends. I promise to always look after you and be loyal to you. I promise to always be on your side and defend you if you ever need. Lastly, I promise to carry on listening to your long story, long, long story short by extra long stories. <laughs> um, I love you, Florence. <laughs> Thank you.
Jess. All right, so we'll go Jess, chuck her ring on. Okay, left. All right, first one is... Is, is on, round of applause. All right, exact same thing in reverse. Oops, I better give you the mic. Oops, sorry. Uh. <clears throat> today on this blessed day, before I profess my vows, I wish to honour some very special men today who are not with us, who are not with us but here in spirit. That's my father, Ronald John Boog, and Jez's father and brother, Richard and Luke Chapman. In honour of these men, I wish to send a prayer. For those of you here who wish to join me in the Our Father, we will go pray now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. <laughs> Sorry. Amen. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting choky. Jez, if my dad was here today, he would be so proud of the man I'm marrying for so many reasons. But I believe the standout in his opinion would be is you are a man of loyalty, determination, and you have the most generous heart. Above all, your purpose in life is to take care of your family in every way. In my culture, that's immensely important to us. My brother and my mother would also agree you have taken into our family with all these values from day one. I'm grateful for every day we journey as a team with a bond that no matter what obstacles, we can't be broken. In honour of our love, I vow to you, my bubby, this. I vow to love and always say I do every time we decide to marry in this lifetime and the next and the next. I vow to always laugh and react to your memes from today forward. <laughs> you have earned that after today and forever. Just limit your meme sharing to only a few a day. <laughs> I vow to remain gullible to all your fictitious stories. Ones like the one you talk about our neighbor, Big Barry Bazza. <laughs> oh, sorry. I vow to always be the best dog mummy to our two babies. I promise when we have human babies, I will brush their hair as much as you brush the dog's hair daily. <laughs> Most importantly, I vow to be by your side as you have stood beside me from the day we met. Through any sickness, any of life's curveballs, I vow to remain your person, your bubby, your place to feel safe and at home. Second one's on, yeah, all right. Round of applause, guys, fantastic. All right, they've been waiting to say those for months, guys. They're already well in advance. <laughs> so um, I'm going to stand over here behind the boys so I'm not the creepy guy in the back of their photo when they kiss. Um, and a little bit of housekeeping now, so I'm not shouting over you. Straight after this, we're going to do a group photo, so I'll throw over to Sarah and Nat. Um, and... Uh, drinks and canapes will start uh, immediately from behind the house. So um, uh, there's going to be family photos as well. Okay. I'm just going to play some music underneath so they can kiss like a rom-com. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. So our beautiful newlyweds are proudest of being here today, surrounded by all of their favourite people in the world, you. They hope to make each other, they hope to keep making each other happy and support each other's dreams of a yoga studio. That's Flo's dream. <laughs> and growing Jez's electrical business. They want to travel together a little bit more if Jez survives, if Jez survives his bucks and then add some human babies to their current fur ones. So 
from your first kiss at Niche Bar in the dark to your wedding in white. Jez, I, I usually invite you for the first time as a husband, but today, for the second time as her husband, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding as I present to you for the second time as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Dudley.